Welcome, folks. This is Mr. Bergman, and we are here in Woodland Park High School at, uh, at, well, what time is it, Mr. Sanders? I was going to ask you the same thing. It's like 6.30 in the morning. Isn't it the greatest time of the day? Mm -mm. What do you mean, no? Because I've got about this much of my coffee finished, and i got about that much to go. <laughs> you are such a wimp, I tell you. <laughs> oh, I was here until 10.30 last night. Well, that's because you you're such a... Um, yeah, well, I was in bed at 9 o'clock. Are you kidding? Yeah, see? Yeah. See, I'm a morning person. You see, Mr. <laughs> Sam's is not a morning person. As you can tell, he needs his coffee. And we're trying to finish up our last podcast today of uh, this whole unit. And um, <laughs> we're like under the gun because, like, you guys need to hear this soon. So mm. we are in trouble. So we figured we'd just get here at 6.30 in the morning. And so I proposed it. And he said yes, which mm. was, I said yes. And he said, well, what did you say? Mm. Yeah, the mmm thing. So, as you can tell, Mr. Sam's needs some help. We knew that last time, actually. It's a different kind of help he needs today, though. He needs to. He needs caffeine, which is actually a molecular compound, is it not? It is. And so, when you're studying molecular compounds, we're going to be talking about the forces that hold compounds together, molecular compounds and such. So, that's kind of cool, isn't it? We're going to be talking about things like caffeine today. Mm. Huh, interesting. All right. Well, with that said, let's focus in on today's lesson. Today, folks, we're going to talk about intermolecular forces. Can you say intermolecular forces, Mr. Sands? Intermolecular forces. Okay. Well, you sound so chipper today. Yeah, it's I'm amazing. I'll, I'll work my way through this couple Hey, of what the heck is intra... In, now, there's intra. actually intra and inter. Yeah, it's kind of like an interstate highway. If you drive on an interstate highway, like if I go up to Denver and I hop on I-70 and I go east. Yeah, interstate. Interstate. Eventually, I'm going to end up in Kansas. But this is intra. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so, and then eventually I'm going to end up in another state. So, interstate highway, you go from one state to another state. Yeah, I see. Okay? But an intrastate highway, like Highway 24 that goes to Woodland Park here, is a, no, that's not a good example. Highway 67 <laughs> that goes out of Woodland Park here is a state highway. If you, yes, if you leave Colorado, you will no longer be on Highway 67. That makes sense. You'll be in like a Wyoming state highway or something. Yeah. Another example that would be interesting uh, do you know that, that Mr. Bergman played basketball in college? Did you really? Yeah, I did. I played basketball. I, I, I went to Oregon State University and I played basketball. Mm -hmm. but like intramural basketball? You see, there, is a, there are two kinds of basketball that uh, takes place in, uh, at Oregon yeah. State University. There's what they call the intramural team, and then there's the intercollegiate athletic yeah. team. The intercollegiate, who do you think they played? Intercollegiate is probably playing other colleges. Yes, yeah, so Oregon State played uh, UCLA. All right. um, and uh, then there was intramural, and I played on intramural. Probably, because I suck at basketball. And, I'm and how, how tall are you, Mr. Bergman? Five foot seven okay. and thought. a half. Yeah. I, think it's now, I think I've lost the half since I'm See, now I'm six See, I'm 6'3", and people always think I'm good at basketball. I'm really bad. So, like, someone accused me of being a basketball player the other day, so I had to get these geeky glasses to, to set things straight. But no... Not a basketball player. Well, you see, I actually, I, I'm a pretty good outside shot. At least in my horrible. in my day, I could shoot from the outside. However, um, I'm five foot seven. I had to get these so there would be no mistake. Okay, but let's talk about uh, what we're talking about in terms of uh, molecules. Okay. When we're talking about molecules, we're talking about a covalent compound. Okay, or a covalent bond. Okay. So this is two water molecules, yeah. and the bond that we're talking about is this bond that, that holds the H's to the O's. Okay, so the that's o is an intra molecular because it's what's in that okay. same molecule. Right, because when I played intramural, intramural. I played other, I, I was on the McNary Hall team. Right, all within played, your school. And we played the, the uh, Samson Hall team or whatever, you all know. Right. Whatever the heck the other teams were, I can't remember. And then uh, intermolecular. You know what I played? What? Intramural ultimate frisbee. Now that would be cool. I, now that's a good game. I can actually I, play that I game. I do like that. I don't I have can, to. There's no ball involved. Yeah, I do like that game. <laughs> I played that. Now, what we're talking about today is not the covalent bond, but the bond that holds one water molecule to another water mm, molecule. Inter Hence, the intermolecular bond. So, folks, you can see us now holding up two. Uh, molecules that have the bent 105 shape. Now the bond in between here that I'm pointing to with my pen that, that holds this ball to this ball is the covalent bond, mm -hmm. the intramolecular Tra. bond. The bond we're talking about now is the bond that holds these two molecules together. It's as if there's a dashed line, dee, 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 or maybe a tiny little thread or string that is holding this molecule to this molecule. That is called the intermolecular bond. That's what we're talking about today. Okay. Okay, so we're back on the screen. All right, now the key thing to understand this entire thing is a chart. Now this chart was developed by, well, by me. Um, <laughs> 
It's the Bergmanian scale of bond strength, I like to call it. And basically we want to look at bonding, and um, there are several varieties of bonding, and you know most of this, and we've talked about this at some length for quite some time. There are covalent compounds, or bonds, and in a covalent bond, what's, what's the story on that? That's going to be what type of uh, substances? Uh, two nonmetals. So that'd be nonmetal to nonmetal. And I want you to write strength of, actually we'll wait there. And then ionic will be? Metal, nonmetal. Metal to nonmetal. And metallic will be? Just metals. Metals. And we've kind of seen this before. Mm -hmm. Now, I want us to add some numbers here. Actually, let's bring another box here. And we're going to call these network solids. And I want you to write the number 100. Okay. So if we were to uh, measure bond strength on a scale of one to one or 0 to 100, um, a network solid, which is made of nothing but covalent bonds, would have a strength of 100. It would be the strongest of all bonds. All right. Okay. And now this is just kind of an arbitrary number that you made up for reference points. Isn't that, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. There is some um, validity to the numbers, right. but it's it's roughly because yeah. they change. Not all network solids right. are the same strength. But it's very helpful to compare one type of bond to another. Yeah. The second see. highest would be an ionic bond, and we're going to put the number 85 here. So ionic bonds are very strong. Mm -hmm. However, not as strong as a network or a covalent bond. These, these is all covalent bonds. And then the metallic would be a little bit weaker, and that's a 65. Okay. Okay, but now we have an issue is that covalent kind of breaks apart. Yeah. And it breaks apart into both polar and nonpolar. And now what we're actually talking about is the intermolecular forces. So below this line, not including these, we, oh, the, the network solids over here, is these are intermolecular forces. Right. The other ones are in tra. So these are the intermolecular forces. Right. We have polar molecules and nonpolar molecules, mm -hmm. and we've learned them. Let's talk about the nonpolar ones. That's called held together by something called a London dispersion force. More on that later. But they are the weakest of all forces. Their strength is 0.1. Mm. Very, very weak compared to a 100, isn't it? And then when you have polar molecules, there are two varieties. There's hydrogen bonding, and there are dipole forces. And for hydrogen bonding, that's a strength of 5, which actually for intermolecular forces is very, Pretty very good. high. And, um, but it's still a 5 out of a scale of 0 to 100. And a dipole force is a 1. Okay. So when we compare bond strengths, you need to know this table. Okay. And here actually it is filled out for hey, you. Look at that. I know. Yeah. So if you want to pause and get the real deal here. Um, you can. All right. Yeah. Polar Pause, molecules. File, print. You can print that off. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you're in QuickTime, just file, print. Yeah. Now, we want to talk about dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bonding. Dipole, but actually, I use the word dipole, dipole here. Um, sometimes it's just called dipole. Um, and dipole, dipole. Yeah, but dipole, dipole means that you've got two poles that are attracted to each other. That sounds like diaper. This sounds like diaper, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. You must have little can you, children. Can you tell what world I live in? Uh, my, not mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got hydrogen bonding, and so let's kind of talk ourselves through this here. Actually, you know what I think I want to do? I want to pause for a second.